Greetings folks, it's Professor Fiore back once again to help you with your electronics. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Class B amplifiers and bias stability. There's a couple of different ways we can bias the transistors. Let's start off with a very basic form using resistors. Now you might recall that we need something, some device to produce a modest forward bias on our two transistors, right? We have a match pair here, NPN, PNP, complementary pair with a 3904 and a 3906. If we don't have anything to slightly turn these guys on, what ends up happening is we get really nasty notch distortion. You know, that first six or seven tenths of a volt of the input signal is going to be essentially lost before the transistors are turned on. So we get these sort of notches or, or cuts, if you will, um, these little aberrations at the zero cross on the sine waves. And with really small signals, I could completely obliterate the signal. So we need to have sort of an idle, right? We set up an idle by producing something that will, like I said, slightly turn on these two transistors. Try to get those bases, you know, up around six or seven tenths of a volt, right, off of this emitter. So this thing should work out to be zero volts back here after C1 and zero volts at the tie of the two emitters. Theoretically, the caps aren't needed here, but I put them in just for completion's sake. We're running on plus and minus 10 volt power supplies. Now, with a 10 volt power supply and a 100 ohm load, we're going to be looking at a peak current, right? When the transistor's turned fully on, you're gonna get virtually all of that 10 volts across to 100 ohms, which is a 10th of an amp or about 100 milliamps peak going through the load. Now we want this idle current to be a few percent of that peak, right? So, you know, what's that gonna be? In two, three, four milliamps, something around there, right? The higher it is, the less nas distortion you're gonna get, but the downside is you're gonna be pulling more current from the source, right? Your idle current is higher, so your idle power is higher. And of course, the idle power dissipation on the transistors will be increased. So there's sort of a balancing act here. Anyway, utilizing one, uh, 1K resistors out here for R1 and R2, most of the voltage is going to drop there. So out of this 10 volts, you know, 9.3, 9.4 is going to drop here. And we want, like I said, six or seven tenths to drop across, uh, in this case, R3, and then sort of a mirror image down here on the lower side, on the negative side. So, you know, with the values that I've chosen, I've thrown in some 76 ohm resistors here. Um, this will give us pretty much what we want. We're going to get around 7 tenths, all right? And this should be sufficient. So let's go take a look at the DC bias on this. All righty. So my ammeter that I throw in here is indicating 2.78 milliamps. Right, so we're looking, like I said, you know, a couple of percent of the uh, saturation current. All right, take a quick, a quick look at some potentials. Open this up a little bit. Okay, so we should have zero right here, but we're getting just about 15 millivolts. Same thing over here, we're getting a slight negative two millivolts. Back here on this base, uh, 700 millivolts, so again, about 7 tenths what we expect. And on this base, on the PNP, we're getting negative 707. So, you know, this looks pretty good, right? Um, now, here's, here's where the fun bit comes in. This resistor is set up to give us the 7 tenths to produce the idle current that we want and produce a decent output waveform. And we can, we can verify that by just doing a transient analysis. All right, so I'm just going to skip the first uh, cycle and we'll just take a look at two cycles over here. All righty. Okay, now um, taking a look at our legend. All right, so I don't really care about this red. That's the ammeter current, which is only really a, sort of a half wave and small by comparison. The load is the brighter green, which is the smaller signal. All right, so we are losing some signal, but we're seeing a fairly decent looking sine wave out of this thing, okay? So far, so good. 
The problem with using resistors is that the current voltage characteristic is linear. It's a straight line, right? Follows Ohm's law. The junction on the transistors, on the other hand, is logarithmic junction. So we get this exponential curve, right? We get this very rapid rise in current as the voltage goes, uh, goes up, right? So if you imagine a current versus voltage, right? As VBE goes up, current goes up, but very quickly, right? We get that rise, that exponential rise. So, you know, if we have a little bit of variability in the power supply, we might have a huge variability in the current going through here, what that idle current is, even though the voltage back here might not change much. All right, so let's change these uh, plus and minus 10 volt sources, right, my uh, bipolar sources here to plus and minus 8 volts, right? So I'm just going to drop it 2 volts, that's all. And let's see what happens to the current, all right? So we had you know, 2.78 uh, last time. So let's see what we get this time. And we get 15 microamps, all right? So this thing is dropped by, you know, a factor of over 100. And yet the power supply only dropped 2 volts, all right? So uh, not what I would call stable. Now let's go the other way. So I'm just going to pop this up. A couple of volts from our standard 12 excuse me from our standard 10 to 12 volts and we'll see what we get this time again it's only a two volt change from that original and this thing has popped up to 32 milliamps so 10 volts plus or minus two volts on the power supply on on the nominal case produces 2.78 mils on the low side produces 15 microamps and on the high side produces 32 milliamps, right? So that's a 2001 change in terms of the current, right? On a plus or minus two volt change. All right, so let's switch things around and go with, instead of resistors, we'll go with some diodes. So here's the same circuit, but I've thrown in some 914 diodes. So this is going to be a perfect match to the uh, 04 and the 06, but it's going to be a much, much tighter fit than just using a resistor. All right, so let's see what we get for our uh, setup here. All right, so I'm, I'm back to my 10 volt power supplies. We've got the same current, 2.78 uh, milliamps. You know, I, I set that specifically on the, in the preceding case so that these two things would match. We can see exactly what's going on. Take a quick check at some of our voltages. Okay, again, ideally zero. You know, there's 700 millivolts there, negative 700 and change on that base, and, you know, about 15 at the output. So everything seems to be working fine in that regard. And now let's go and change the power supplies from 10 down to 8. Check out what the stability here is. Remember, last time we, we um, only had 15 microamps when we dropped this. Oh, look, it's only 1.9, 1.91, if you want to call it that, right? So, yeah, it dropped, but it didn't even get cut in half. So this appears to be much more stable, all right? And then if we go the other way and say, well, let's increase the power supplies, all right? We'll increase these uh, 2 volts over nominal, so we're at 12 volts. And now it's jumped up to 3.7. Remember last time, this thing was, you know, like 32 milliamps. So, um, yeah, there has been an increase, but it's a very subtle increase. You know, we're, we're not even looking at a 2 to 1 change between the 8 volt power supply and the 12 volt power supply using the diodes, right? So, you know, that's way better than what we saw with the resistors. Even though they have the same nominal value, any fluctuation in the power supply is going to show up as a much larger variation in the quiescent current, right, that ICQ current, when we use resistors. So the end result is these diodes are going to perform much better as far as stability of the circuit, the consistency of the circuit, from unit to unit to unit as we, you know, build these things, put them on a production run. So this is going to be much, much nicer. This also has a much smaller um, AC resistance value, typically, depending on how you bias it, but typically. So that would also help to lower 
uh, potentially lower the distortion in the amplifier. All right, so there we have it. You can bias it either way, resistors, diodes, but diodes are going to give you a much more stable, uh, a much more consistent form than using the resistors, right? Any, any variation in the power supplies, um, we're going to see a much bigger variation in ICQ if we use resistors rather than diodes, right? In a larger system, uh, maybe where we have a quasi-complementary output or we've got Darlington's out here, um, we might opt for something like uh, a VBE multiplier instead of diodes, but a VBE multiplier is still based on using a, uh, a semiconductor junction, so it's going to have the same level of stability that we see with the diodes. It's just you'll have a little bit more flexibility in, in terms of setting what that default is. And VBE multipliers are uh, explained in some detail uh, in the text. Remember that text is free. That's an open educational resource, an OER, free textbook. Check out my we uh, websites. Um, that you'll see the uh, links and so forth in the description of this video. Alrighty, have a good one. See you next time.